Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and we're on site here in Punta Gorda. We're at an airport where I'm testing out this new machine to me. And when I say to me, it's been out for a few months, but it's a, a Lincoln PowerMig 210MP. Now, the reason that I'm demonstrating this is it's got three processes in it. And I keep getting phone calls over and over and over again, and I keep getting really good accolades on this machine. And the people that are using it for the MIG process. Yes, I use that word, the MIG process. So what I asked about it was, how good does it TIG weld? And I can't find anybody that's tested it on TIG. So that's been what our, uh, our course is. We're going to test this machine on TIG. So ordered it in and looked through the, uh, the operator's manual. But this requires a couple of features on it before you can TIG weld. So just so you know, I see this advertised at uh, $999, and it comes with the power supply. You can automatically stick weld with it, and you can automatically MIG weld it. It's got all the accessories for that. What it doesn't have are the accessories for the TIG. So here's what you're going to need. I opened up the manual here, and it says you're going to need a TIG torch accessory kit, a twist mate adapter, a, uh, a TIG torch itself, and there's also a foot amp troll adapter that you have to install. Uh, so I'm going to show you what that's all about. It's not in the machine. Uh, you have to buy that as a separate item. So I put the cost of these all together, and we've got $999. So you go a, a foot control, a K870 foot control, torch, all of that. You're in the three dollars to $400 category. So just know that it's going to cost you about $1,400 $1, to get started in TIG. Now, make sure you know the features of this because I don't want you to buy this thinking that it's a great aerospace type welding machine. It's got a touch start. It doesn't have a high frequency start. When you turn the gas on, make sure you get a valve on your gas torch because it doesn't have a solenoid. When you hit the foot control, <clears throat> the gas doesn't just automatically come on. So this is a pretty rudimentary TIG, DC only, and we're going to show you some of the thicknesses that, that, that are represented in this machine. I've got 16 gauge material here, so we're going to see how to hook this up. Uh, I'm going to go to the front of the machine because it's got some cool features to it and just demonstrate. I'm testing it as we speak. So when we finish, I'll give it an evaluation and then we'll move on to the, uh, the MIG process and the stick process. So uh, let me move around here and show you some of the close-ups of how to set this machine up for TIG only. Okay, this is the first time that I've actually set this machine for TIG welding. So, turn the on switch. Computer goes through its startup. You'll see the front panel here. It's going to cue me to do something. Okay, so I, I hit a button here and I get some activity. I'm just playing with it. So, that's what you ought to do. So, I hit a button and it says, TIG, it's got all kinds of settings. Oh, I accidentally put it into MIG. So use this primary knob to scroll until you see the TIG setting. And then push the button. That means that I'm on the TIG setting. Remember, this is going to be nothing more than a lift arc or a touch and lift. Okay, now it's, it's going to scroll me through here and say, here's the setup. Do I have the cables put in the right position? And I do. I've got the torch right here on the left. The torch is on the negative side. The ground is on the positive side. That's critical. Okay, so as I scroll through here, it's asking me questions. Do I have a foot control hooked up to this? Or am I just touch starting and I get what I get? I'm hooked up to a K870 foot control. So I hit yes. Move it over to yes. Okay, now it's asking me tungsten diameter. I've got 1 16th tungsten in there, so I, I have 1 16th tungsten. Now it's asking me how thick of material do I want to weld. So I scroll, and I'm between 14 and 16 gauge. I hit the button, and now all my information is in there. Now it's telling me everything I've got to, to, to use for parameters. I've got a foot control, it's telling me that the foot control is ready. So what I have to do is I now have to hook up this foot control. How do you do that? Well, you know, if you've looked at any of the Lincoln machines, there's a, there's a six pin Amphenol, but you gotta find it. Now most of the machines already have them right there in front, 
So I went through the, uh, the book here to see if I could find where it was. It's on the side, and you have to install this little kit. Very tricky. Let me show you this little kit you have to install. Okay, right, right here is an acceptance hole. There's a little plug in there. I took the plug out, it was plastic, and we have to fish these wires through. Now there's a Molinex that goes to the inside. It has to be hooked up somewhere. But you know what? I can't reach in there in this little hole and hook up that Molinex. I can put this in place and put the sheet metal screws in place. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, what I ended up having to do, though, to hook up that Molinex is take off this entire front face. And uh, that's quite a chore. So I'm going to go ahead and finish putting this together. And then I'll hook up the foot control and show you what it looks like afterwards. Okay, now this is a standard K870 foot control, a standard six pin connector with Lincoln Electric, and this is where we install it. Okay, now the foot control is hooked up. Just keep in mind it's going to be a lift start. We're not going to hear any high frequency whatsoever. Make sure you turn your gas on, whether you turn it on at the bottle or whether you have a valve on your torch. So uh, we're going to try it. I'll put my gear on and we'll see how this lift start works. Okay, now I've already set up a couple of pieces of steel. I've overlapped them, so I've got a lap joint. I've pre-tacked them. Now what I noticed in pre-tacking is that this lift start, a little bit rough. A little bit rough in that I'm not sure exactly what amperage it'll allow you to start. Uh, so I'm going to have some assistance and people are going to watch the real time on the machine just like you can. Anyway, uh, it, it seems like it's starting uh, pretty rough up, up in the 20 amperage. So be careful if you're buying this machine to do real super thin sheet metal, it'll weld it but uh, take a look at the arc starts. So uh, let's try it. I'm gonna show you what it'll do and then we'll re-review re it. Okay, it's got a very stable arc. DC's uh, usually pretty friendly anyway. But again, this DC straight polarity using a 1 16th tungsten. And I'm not using any filler because uh, I'm really just testing the machine. So I get to the end of the weld, I taper off. And it tapered off pretty good. All right. I don't think I want to stop there. I think I want to do a little bit more. So I'm going to light an arc again. I just want to get repeatability. Okay, so I, you know, I'm able to keep a pretty small bead on this. If I were doing sheet metal for a car or something like duty like that, uh, it certainly will go down low enough. Um, when I get to the end of the weld, I taper off, and that tells me how much stability I've got. So my puddle has re-solidified, and I've still got an arc, so that's a good sign. Okay, I've just I've finished doing the TIG welding on this. Uh, the only surprise that I had was how harsh the arc start was. Um, and I was asking people that were watching the machine for me, and I'm getting anywhere from 19 to 29 amps in arc start. Now that could be influenced by the tungsten, how you grind it, but that's a feature that really needs to be adjusted well. Uh, anyway, it's just average at best. Arc stability is fantastic. Uh, you know, it's a 110, 220 machine. Uh, if you're buying this machine just for sheet metal or stainless steel, it's probably a pretty good all-purpose machine. Now just keep in mind, I'm, I'm never a, a, 
in favor of having all the processes in one, only because something has to be sacrificed. And in this particular case, arc initiation was sacrificed just to keep it at the right price point. So we're gonna move on, we're gonna do the, uh, the stick welding portion of it and the MIG welding portion of it and to give you our feedback. So thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.